Recently, it became known that General of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Alexander Pavlyuk, was on a secret visit to Dresden, where he discussed Kyiv's needs on the battlefield with NATO commanders. The meeting itself lasted from August the 27th to the 29th, Build reports. Commanders from 35 countries attended the meeting. The event was hosted by German Army Inspector General Alphonse Meiss. Among those present was UK Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces in Africa and Europe, Darrell Williams. No commander was to speak to the press. During the visit, Germany showed its allies the latest weapons developments. The Sky Ranger wheeled system, which was developed to combat drones, was interesting. The price is 18 million euros. The maximum speed of the system is 100 kilometers an hour. The automatic cannon has a caliber of 30 millimeters. It can shoot down drones within a radius of 3 kilometers, and if armed with Stinger missiles, the radius increases to 9 kilometers. The RCH-155 unmanned howitzer also attracted interest. Its price is 10 million euros. It can fire at the enemy at a speed of up to 30 kilometers an hour. It fires up to 9 shots per minute. The range is 54 kilometers. These howitzers were ordered by Ukraine. It will receive them in 2025 in the amount of 52 units. Recall amid murmurings in Berlin that the country may curtail its military support for Ukraine, the German government recently confirmed a long list of scheduled deliveries for Kyiv, including dozens of armored vehicles, rocket launchers and tens of thousands of rounds of ammunition. Among the equipment the government reaffirmed it would send by the end of the year are two additional Iris-T SLM air defense systems, two Iris-T SLS launchers, 10 Gepard anti-aircraft guns, 16 Panzer Hobbits 2000 howitzers, as well as Zuzana and RCH-155 self-propelled howitzers, combat drones, several thousand rounds of artillery and ammunition for armored vehicles, and a batch of 30 Leopard 1A5 tanks. Germany is Europe's most significant backer of Kyiv's defensive fight against Russian invaders, providing over $15.5 billion in support, mostly military, between when the invasion started in February 2022 and the end of June 2024, according to the Kiel Institute for the World Economy's public tracker. Meanwhile, already authorized German weapons deliveries will continue in 2025. In the next calendar year, more than 20 PZH-2000, Zuzana and RCH-155 howitzers, 20 Marda infantry fighting vehicles, 37 Leopard 1A5 Gepards, 3 Iris-T SLM systems and also 3 Iris-T SLS systems, as well as 2 Skynex air defense systems and thousands of rounds of ammunition will be transferred to Ukraine. Oles Maliarevich, deputy commander with the 92nd Brigade's Achilles Battalion of Ukraine, reports intense fighting in the settlement of Lybok, with Ukraine's armed forces holding the upper hand. He shared this on Espresso TV. We're continuing our operations in the Strelecha, Lybok, Lipsy direction in the Kharkiv region. Right now, there's heavy fighting in Lybok, but the momentum is fully in our favor. Our mission is to liberate Lybok. The Russian forces are desperately holding onto every house, every dugout, pulling in reinforcements wherever they can. They're throwing in their reserves, but since these are small infantry units, they can always be reinforced by nearby troops, Maliarevich explained. According to him, the Russians realize that the border is just seven kilometers from Lybok. If they lose Lybok, they'll retreat to Strelecha, which sits right on the border. This means they'll lose what they captured in May, and the situation could unfold similarly to what's happening in the Kursk region. The deputy commander also mentioned that Russian forces have started shifting some of their reserves from the Kharkiv direction to the Kursk region. This is noticeable on the front line. We've seen a drop in the number of guided aerial bombs. We're seizing this window of opportunity to strengthen our position, Maliarevich noted. The Russians have understood the purpose of the diversionary maneuver in the Kursk region and have not moved their forces from the Pokrovsk direction. On the contrary, they are only reinforcing this area. Perhaps in a week or two, we will see the first battles for the city of Pokrovsk. The Russians are advancing. If they were 50 kilometers away from Pokrovsk in winter, they have now almost reached the city, noted Ivan Stupak, a Ukrainian military expert. According to the military expert, there are questions to the local authorities of Pokrovsk.
These issues were first voiced by the military. They observed that in Pokrovsk, the same pattern is repeating as in Bakhmut, Solidar, Avdiivka, Marinka and other cities. Instead of building fortifications, funds were spent on city improvements. As a result, the Russians are getting closer. Stupak emphasized.